Hello, little Falkenstein children. This is your Uncle Jim back for another edition of the Intellectual Devotional. I know. It's been pretty great so far. How can it continue to be great every week? Maybe it won't. Let's see. Maybe you could be skeptical because the day of the word of the day is skepticism. What does that mean? It means I don't believe this is going to be as great as everything else was. <clears throat> Have you ever had a dream, Neo, that you were so sure was real? What if you were unable to wake up from that dream? How would you know the difference between the dream world and the real world? Morpheus from the Matrix. That's the movie where the numbers go down and, and Keanu Reeves and something stuck in his brain. But it's not his brain because he doesn't have much of one of those. Okay, let's see. Are you living in a computer simulation? How do you know? It seems like you are holding a real book made of real paper. But how do you know it is? It isn't because a computer is telling your brain to have the experience of holding a book made of real paper. Hmm? Are you even looking at me? How do you know that any of your experiences about the world are worth trusting? Bum, bum, bum. So freaky, right? The dilemma is known as the problem of skepticism about the external world. Skepticism, more generally, is any set of philosophical arguments or claims intended to undermine our belief in something, uh, in some alleged body of knowledge. So, uh, let's see. So if you say something and then your dad says, uh, no, you're wrong, that means he's being skeptical, which is pretty close to your dad, really. A skeptic is someone who uses skeptical arguments to undermine our ordinary claims of knowledge. Sounds more like your dad, doesn't it? Here's another form of skepticism. How do you know that other people have thoughts, feelings, and experiences? They act as though they have thoughts, and if you ask them, they will say they have experiences. But how do you know they are telling the truth? Everyone might be lying to you because they don't exist. It'd be. Let's see. Any evidence that tries to support the claim that other people are thinking beings can be reinterpreted to suggest that they are very elaborately programmed robots. This is what I've been saying all along about everything to everybody. Even you, robot camera that is recording me right now. Many philosophers have claimed to have resolved the problem of skepticism about the external world and other minds. Still others have admitted defeat. That means the robots have taken over them. Rene Descartes wrote the most famous and influential presentation of skepticism in his Meditations on First Philosophy, in which he considers the possibility that a very powerful but malevolent demon has created him and is systematically deceiving him. Everyone knows that anyone who has created you is lying to you. Uh, wait a minute, maybe there's more here. Descartes asked his reader, How do I know that I am not being deceived by such a demon? How do you know that I am not a demon who is deceiving you? I might be deceiving you, but not a demon. Look, no horns. While Immanuel Kant regarded it as a great scandal that philosophy had not yet solved the problem of skepticism, Martin Heidegger wrote that the great scandal was not that the problem was not solved, but that philosophers thought that it stood in need of a solution. So that guy, Heidegger, said, chill out, maybe we don't exist, maybe we're all robots, maybe there's a demon controlling us, but hey, just chill out and have a soda. All right, skepticism, that's the word today. Well. Thanks, little Fox Nine kids. We'll see you next time on Intellectual Devotional.